So I wrote a sermon <laughs> called Ain't Got Time to Die. And that's, this text made me think about that spiritual that was written by um, uh, a guy named Hal Johnson, or Hal Johnson. He uh, used to hear his grandmother singing spirituals, and then he was a composer and a classically trained musician who spoke German and French, though he was black in the Harlem Renaissance. And he took this beautiful spiritual that he had heard, and he organized it into the spiritual that you've heard people sing, Fitz Jubilee singers, oh, I just keep so busy, right? Serving my master, or keep so busy working for the kingdom, ain't got time to die. This is uh, the title of the sermon comes from that song. And even as I was writing, and I had no idea how I was going to have my, what my feelings were going to be today about my dad's death last August, I kind of put it on a shelf so that I could preach this sermon. It does not feel like it's on a shelf right now, to be honest. <laughs> but I was thinking then about the seeds that get planted in us by our parents. And maybe I'm just going to reflect on that for just a second that those of us who are parenting or holding or creating containers for young people, which I'm going to say is all of us, are planting seeds in them. They could be seeds of oppression, or they could be seeds of liberation. They could be seeds of oppression, or they could be seeds of liberation. In the sermon I wrote, which I'm going to preach next Sunday, <laughs> <laughs> Seems like the right thing to do. But this idea that all around the globe, seeds of kingdom, seeds of kingdom of God, or seeds of kingdom of empire. Seeds of kingdom of God, or seeds of kingdom of empire. Seeds of empire. Peggy McIntosh's knapsack article that she wrote in the late 80s, that white people have seeds planted in them that are easy to not notice, but they can choose to be with white people if they want to choose to be with white people. They don't have to be in black neighborhoods if they don't want to. They don't have to shop at black stores if they don't want to. They don't have to consume black literature, black TV, black music if they don't want to. They don't have to touch blackness, brownness, Asianness, Hispanicness. They don't have to if they don't want to. Because the seeds of white power, white beauty, white supremacy are planted in them as little kiddos. Right? In the same way, seeds of inferiority are planted in little kids. It's subtle, but a consistent drip. You are not as beautiful. You are not as smart. You are not as capable. We don't expect anything from you. You will not excel in school. You will not earn as much as living as a white folk. You will not succeed. This world is not for you. Seeds of inferiority planted in black and brown children, in Jewish children, in Muslim children. Amen? My dad had seeds planted in him from the empire that his little black self, born in 1934 in Mississippi, in the Depression, in Jim Crow, that he was not going to make it. He was not as worthy. He was not as beautiful. He was not as capable. He was not as talented. And my dad was brilliant and beautiful and strong and skipped two grades. But the world didn't plant seeds of, I see you, gorgeous, tall, black man in him. The seeds that got planted in him were seeds that would make him sad and make him angry and make him Frustrated, right? And sometimes those seeds came to his kids because he's only human. 
And so we could be in a space where he's planting seeds both of your amazing, sparkly, shiny Lewis's, you can do anything you want because God loves you and we love you. We got all of those seeds, right, Roderick? But sometimes we get seeds of be quiet, sit down, shut up, be seen, not heard, let's manage you, let's keep you safe from the white folk seeds, which could be in us simultaneously growing up like good plants and weeds in the same body. Are y'all with me? This is a couple of minutes of reflection, because it's almost. <laughs> Tina's dad died, and I think he was lovely, but I bet he wasn't perfect. Maybe he was perfect. Mine wasn't. <laughs> Pam, okay, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Perfect. Te Tina's perfect dad died. <laughs> Pam's dad died. He wasn't perfect. My daddy, my daddy died. And he wasn't perfect. But he was my hero. Because despite the seeds planted in him, he raised six children, sent us to college, earned a living, mostly came home at night to my mama. <laughs> 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 yeah. and I'm just saying mostly. <laughs> Might have been late. <laughs> Might have been late, but he came home. He was, he was a beautiful, flawed, lovely, generous broken, healing force of nature. And maybe all we can expect as people who birth children or don't, but who are around little ones, is to be our best seed planter we can be. Like to check our own stuff so the seeds we're planting are mostly seeds that flower into kingdom, that flower into reign of God as opposed to flowering into the weeds of empire. Like just doing the best we can to have love be our guide enough that, you know, in case we're not perfect like Tina's dad, <laughs> that, we, that we are mostly planting seeds that will lead to flourishing. That we are primarily planting seeds that lead to confidence. That we predominantly plant seeds that tell little people, young people, the people in our lives, you can be, do whatever you want to be. I'm gonna create a container for you to discover your best self, right? Like my dad's children turned out pretty all right, except for me. <laughs> There's something about the grief that we feel even when the flawed parent dies, because they've taught us how to love. And I think maybe that's all I'm supposed to say today. That we just are to teach each other how to love. That to teach each other how to love gently, powerfully. And love doesn't mean saying yes to everything, right? Raising kids, without boundaries and discipline is not love. Raising kids who bully and get away with it raises bullies. <laughs> Raising kids who don't have checks and balances makes them feel insecure. One of my siblings who won't go named, because that's not fair, was so smart uh, when they got sick as a child and mom and dad kind of stopped giving them the no, that this sibling called me when I was in college and said, I think they must think I'm dying because they never say no anymore. Love has a no in it. Love has yes and no. Love has boundaries and space. Love has discipline and grace. Love is what we must plant in each other or we will never be liberated. The good news of Juneteenth has something to do with liberation coming soon on a Sunday next week. <laughs> the sermon that I wrote for today.
with all kinds of information about Juneteenth and what it means and, you know, all the stages of liberation that we need to go through, hallelujah, so we can really get free. But I think it starts right here. It starts with the grief we feel because of the love we feel. And holy cow, we could build a whole movement by planting seeds that flower from love as opposed to seeds that grow into the weeds of despair and despondency because they're filled with hate. How's that? We, we, we just have to be nimble when the spirit is moving. Amen. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. The male pronoun was sung and I thought about my dad. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Let us anoint the young people in our lives with love. More next week. <laughs> Amen. Mm-hmm.